now we're going to create another functional test. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's create a test um, for our handler. So this is the part where you have to think a bit because we want to create a functional test for our handler. So the functional test will use JSON uh, because it will have uh, it will emulate an event. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to split up our directories right now into three di different directories called uh, domain, application, and infrastructure. Um, that's something related to what we call domain-driven design. Or not we, but um, uh, the person who wrote the book, Eric Evans, I believe. We have the infrastructure layer, we have the domain layer, and we have the application layer. Um, our handler is in the application layer because um, the outer, you, you should like uh, see an onion and then you have like the domain, which is like the core. The application is stuff that um, goes around the core and infrastructure is the part that actually goes around the application and it's your outside. So the infrastructure um, in layer actually is everything related to endpoints and uh, third party connections, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The application layer is for uh, handling business logic, at least in my opinion, and um, um, doing stuff within the application, sort of. And your domain layer is for defining interfaces and defining your domain model. We need to create a handler and we need to, um, I think this is actually good enough. I think we can already start our class over here. Uh, the class we're going to make is uh, at command to data store handler test. Bam, there we got it. Here we have this functional test again, extends web test case. And you're going not to believe this, but we are actually going to make a test right here and we're going to leave it alone for the rest of the development cycle. Um, but this, this test allows us to actually create the data store handler, which is what we need later on. Um, so that's why we're actually making this right now. Public function, it adds a, um, it adds a command, sorry, to, no, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm writing this wrong. It handles a command. That's basically what we want to test here because this is a handler and we should only test if it handles something. <clears throat> so the fun fact is that we are going to uh, make a JSON file. Let's do this. I'm, I'm use, uh, the convention that we use is actually um, to get a, make a folder exactly named like the test. like that. And then we get a, where is it? 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 Request.json and we get a response.json. So what this test basically is going to do is it go, it's go, it, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going to get the uh, text from the request.json. It then processes it through the code and then um, it expects the response back that that's written in response.json. I'm going to get the request is there. Um, dot. I think add, yeah, this, and then request JSON. I believe this is correct. And then dollar uh, request is, I, basically this is a request file, request JSON, isn't it prettier? Request JSON, and then the request itself is um, file get contents. Oh, that request JSON. Maybe it's even prettier if I just do it like this, because why not? Uh, oops. Like that. Here we go. So after that, 
we are going to define a serializer because we need to uh, serialize, deserialize this to um, an object. If uh, this is probably a bit of, um, you know, if you haven't heard of these terms before, it's it's pretty technical. But what we want to do is we want to convert the text within this JSON object to a value object or an entity object, uh, which is part of our domain. And to to um, to show that real quick, um, but what we basically want to do is uh, this this file over here is nothing but just basic text. Uh, in a in a file, it's going to be something like um, like this. Um, I believe it's data. Oh, oops. We have another object, and then we we're going to define like a comment. Um, let's say hi, Denny. And let's do user ID, I don't know, uh, oop. <coughs> and maybe some sort of topic ID, I guess. So user ID, topic ID, and the comment itself. Something like that. I'm I'm just I'm just writing down some some stuff and and it, it actually has to parse this data into an object itself and we use a serializer for that. So serializer as equals to um, and this is uh, funny because we're going to use the the serializer that I have not imported yet. So I need to get imported the JMS serializer. Um, here we go, here we go, get container, get, our event is equals to serializer um deserialize and dollar json uh, i'm sorry this is this is not dollar json this is dollar request and then we're going to use a let's say command absurded event class json so for now, this is enough. Right now, we're going to leave this test alone because we we, 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 we don't have anything right now that we can do with it. Um, we, we, are, we want to deserialize our event towards a clause called command absurd event. And we basically say towards the deserializer, hey, this request is JSON. So use from JSON towards this clause. So uh, let's create this thing. And let's make that right now. So we, we have this folder called domain. Um, and in our domain, we have what it's called an um, value object. I'm just, I'm doubting if we use plural or not plural for this. Um, I think we're not using plural. No, we don't. Value object. <coughs> And the value object is called a comment absurded event. There we go. Class comment absurded event. And then we create a private uh, dollar um, user ID private dollar topic ID private dollar comment. This is what we had, right? So I want this. I, I want this handler because we're not doing this right here. We're actually 
okay, we, we're actually we're actually converting this event ourselves, um, which is pretty funny because that's actually not what we're supposed to do here. But uh, this is like a workaround for something else we later. But what we're going to do is we're going to later on um, make a uh, comment of handler basically. Handler is new uh, at comment to data store handler and we say handler handle dollar event that's basically what we're going to do and then we expect something in return mm, okay so this test obviously fails because we don't have this linked we don't have this made yet so this will fill but since it's a test we are allowed to create this thing and we are cre allowed to create this thing because we need it for test to work. So we already created this thing. It's over here. So I'm going to load it in right here. And it's there. Ta-da. App domain value object comment observed event. Now we go to this. Add comment to data store handler. It's not, it's not, it's not existing yet. So we are allowed to make it. And therefore we are going to create an application folder. Oh, oops. I application folder and we are making a file called at command to data store handler we're using the the same namespacing as uh, our tests so we can see hey i have a bug in this file what's the test that's uh linked to it or vice versa um it makes it easier so we have in application a file called at command to data store handler test and in our application folder here, we have a at comment the data store handler dot PHP. This handler, according to our test, must have a handle handle function that handles a uh, event. So we create that. <clears throat> we say, hey, um, public function handle, and it should have a. Um, Let's say a up a command, hang on, command absurd event dollar event. There we go. <clears throat> here we go, here we go. So now we have that. And now we have this code. And um, it's, 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 it's starting to actually become really clear what we need uh, from this point on because. Um, I think if I run this test, oh wait, hang on, I have not linked yet. Oh, oops, go back. There we go. If I run this test, I'll, I, it will say that it fails because my serializer stuff doesn't do anything. You have requested a non-existent server JMS serializer. That's because we haven't configured our JMS serializer yet. We have this packages. These are like our config, config uh, file folder is our configuration folder. And we have a uh, we need a folder to uh, tell JMS serializer what hack it needs to do. So let me actually copy paste that real quick from another project I have with me, um, and let's put it in here. So JMS serializer here actually um, tells everything here. Hey, you know, um, yeah, it's hard to explain everything right here. Um, but this thing, let me remove this. We don't need that yet. This thing will actually um, uh, help us uh, because now JMS Serializer will actually be there. Uh, so now my question is, why didn't it work? Did I, did I not install JMS Serializer yet? I think I should have, right? JMS the serializer here JMS serializer okay it should be there why isn't it there oh maybe because it's not in my bundles.php there we go so for some reason uh, it didn't put it there okay so we'll get it in there 
ourselves right there. So JMS serializer bundle, JMS serializer bundle, which is basically JMS serializer bundle. Oh, that's the reason I made a mistake. I made a biggie. I made a mistake. Okay. Sorry. My mistake. I need the uh, serializer bundle. So the thing is you have basically JMS serializer, which is the serializer package. But the serializer bundle is a specific package for Symfony that we need. It's like the bridge between uh, the package itself and Symfony to in order to make it work for Symfony. So uh, what I'm going to have to do right now is to compose a remove. Remove, compose a remove. Uh, compose a remove in the package, okay, yeah. So I'm going to compose a remove the... JMS serializer, composer, where is it? Wait, oops. Uh, is it over here? Yeah, no. What? It's this one. Composer remove. There we go. So now it's basically deleting it. I think because I think the bundle will install itself for us. I think I don't think we need to actually copy paste this. That's what I was wondering about. Uh, yeah, good point. That's not. I don't mind that as long as it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have to compose a require serialize a bundle. Now I think it will work soon. Yeah, this is a lot better. Wait, hang on. Oh yeah, sure, don't worry. Uh, oops. There we go, okay, so now it works. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, now we are running our test again because now we have the serializer is existent now. And it actually says, hey, the test works, but the test did not perform any assertions. So, hey, that's weird. Uh, the, the the framework actually says, oh, you got a test over here, but I need I didn't need to check anything. So why 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 do you have me as a test? Um, so that's a good point. Let's actually say this assert equals, and let's say, um, let's say I don't know. Let's say true, and then. Um, Let's actually do this for now. We're going to refactor this later on, so it doesn't really matter as long as the tests succeed, what we're doing right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put in over here, I'm going to say return true. And then the test will succeed. There we go. So now we have basically working functionality. This, this, this thing could go live, could go on prod, and you have like working functionality but it doesn't do yet what we want it to do. 